we are looking at Psalm 23. And uh, this is, uh, I think, just once again, a beautiful psalm. We talked a bit last week when we talked about Psalm 22 on uh, how, actually the last couple of weeks, on how um, Psalm 22 and Psalm 23 and Psalm 24 are all connected. You can't have Psalm 23 if you don't have Psalm 22. Psalm 22 is what the Lord did to allow the opportunities for Psalm 23. So Psalm 22 is what? That's him dying on the cross. Remember, we went through all of that aspect about his death that we saw from Psalm 22. Now that he has died and the payment has been made, Psalm 23 tells us what we get now. Psalm 23 is a, you, this is what you get now, right now, while you're uh, uh, on earth today. This is what Psalm 23 will give you. Now, when we look at Lord willing next week and we look at Psalm 24, we're going to see what your future holds. So, you get to the past with Psalm 22. Hello, Cheryl. And you get to see why you have the opportunity to have what we're going to see here in Psalm 23. But, but make no mistake, if you don't have Psalm 22, you don't have Psalm 23. We're going to, we're going to be saying that continuously through the study. So I just think you might as well get used to hearing that because we're going to say that a lot. Because I'm going to point out something that Psalm 23 says, and I'm saying, but wait a minute now, you don't get that unless you first dealt with Psalm 22. So there's a lot to it, and that's why I say that Psalm, these three Psalms, 22, 23, and 24, are always going to be connected. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get the reading in. It's not long. It's only six verses, but man, does it say a lot. Let's take a listen. Psalms 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All right. There we go. Psalm 23. All right. Let's get right into it. This is a messianic psalm. It is a psalm of David. And um, this is one of those psalms that most people think David wrote later on in life. Uh, after, you know, this is not just a shepherd David, but this is where David went back and became king and went through all that he went through and was able to kind of glimpse back at his life and understand what God has done and where God has brought him through. So it has a maturity aspect to it, and it has a aspect of you don't really sometimes get to understand this until you go through some things, and then you begin to recognize the, uh, the goodness and the richness that is offered in the relationship that we have with the Lord. Which is important to say when you think of our commentators that say that, because, of course, Psalm 23 comes after what goes through in Psalm 22. The difficulty, the frustration, um, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, annihilation of who you are to become something greater, um, all of that happens first, and then Psalm 23 happens. But look what it says. Look at how it opens. And, and, and this is key. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, it didn't say the Lord is a shepherd. It didn't say that. It said the Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd. That's an important difference. Because, see, to know that God is God and that God is who he say he is, 
But is he God to you? Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? There's a lot of people that want to associate, know God. I want to know spiritual things. But is the Lord your shepherd? Nothing that you do, whether you accept him or deny him, will change that God is a shepherd. The question is, is he your shepherd? Then we got to break that down. Now, the Lord. We've talked enough about that. Jesus said, if, if, if you're going to call me Lord, then you're going to do the things that I say. Well, how do we know what Jesus says? You come to him. You seek. You knock. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. And so you wanna, if you want to know what the Lord wants you to do, you got to go and actively Pursue your destiny in God. And God will give it to you. He will show it to you. Now, if you don't want it, and if you want to do your own destiny, he will let you do that too. See, that's the thing about um, allowing God to be your Lord and your shepherd. I want to know the outline and the plan and the purpose for what God has me here, here for. Now, some people will say, well, listen, Wayne, if God's got your life planned out like that, that means you don't have a choice. No, that's not true. I do have a choice. I can choose not to do it. Well, that means then, Wayne, that if you want to do the right thing, you only can do what God tells you to do or what he outlines for you to do, and that's how you get to be this so-called child of God. And uh, that don't sound like freedom to me. And I will say, well, in one sense, you're absolutely right. Because... We don't live in a land where freedom truly exists. So what do we need? We need guidance out of the prison so we can be free. And God says, I can guide you out of the prison. See, if you are trying to escape from a, 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 a prison where people are shooting and killing and everything, and there's a way out. To just sit there and go, well, I want to sit here and enjoy the scenery. I want to sit here and relax. You're going to get shot. But if you somebody comes in and says, I know how to get you out of this, of, of this disaster, but you got to follow me. Now, by my own free will, I'll be like, you know what? I do want out of here. And I don't know how to do it myself. I don't have enough power to go back and stop what's going on. So I think I'm going to willingly follow the guy that knows how to get me out of here. And I get to know him. And then the next thing I know, I get to realize that he really does care for me. And I can treat him as my Lord and I'm listening. Well, that's a very crude example of what God is doing. He's leading us out. Now, somebody says, well, well still, that don't make you free. It makes you a follower. Yes. I am a follower. I'm a follower of Jesus. But guess what? There is nothing you can do on earth that will ever make you truly free. Jesus said, what happens if you gain the whole world, but you still you lose, lose your soul? Yourself. You're not free. So how can we ever then be free? Well, that's what we're trying to get to. And that's what we're going to talk about next time in Psalms 24 where we get to recognize that God has prepared stuff for us that we have never seen, nor heard, nor tasted. It's nothing, it hasn't even entered into our hearts. We here on earth have no idea what freedom is. Amen. We have been bound, tied, and tangled mm -hmm. up to sin so many uh, different ways. Well, we were born into it. Because we were born and raised in it. And so we need God to get us out of this sin trap because he knows how to get us out and the only way out is Jesus. Then you will find out what true freedom is. So, to all the people that ask that question, well, if you're going to make God your, your Lord and make him your, your, your shepherd, then you're not doing your own will. Exactly. Because I don't know how to navigate through this prison of sin myself. So I will follow the one that, that made the path. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the door. Okay, so it's through him that I'm able to get through. 
That's why I make the Lord Jesus my Lord and my shepherd. And some people will say, well, because some people want to attack Psalm 23 and go, well, you're going to make him your Lord and your shepherd. You just follow with somebody. You just, you ain't trying to find out who you really are. I know who I am. I'm a sinner. And I'm in, I'm, 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 I'm in, a, I'm in a deadly place where I will die, which we're going to get into all of that, because this is a place of death. And I need to get out of it. I want to get to where life is. And then I can experience freedom. But until I do that, I'm in this battle, in this fight to, man to maneuver and to get myself to something wonderful. There's a lot of people that do a lot of preaching about how you're going to do this and you're going to say these things. And all of a sudden, your miracle is going to happen and your life's going to change. And you're going to have this wonderful experience here on earth. And I ain't trying to, to live on earth. To, I'm not trying to <laughs> discourage people from trying to do stuff. But let me tell you something. It ain't earth that I'm mm -hmm. following the Lord for. Mm -hmm. I'm not following the Lord because I'm trying to, to be just somebody wonderful on earth. I'm following God because he's the creator of eternity, of all things. I see him as the Lord of lords, the king of kings. I want heaven and all of its possibilities. You know, you know that, that's funny because today early when my sister was here, yesterday was my aunt Ronnie's birthday. My mother was the last sibling that was living. My mother's birthday was the ninth. Mm -hmm. So I called Barbara while we were talking there. I said, you know, I was thinking about our brother all on her birthday, and I'm just sitting here talking, you know, just talking to my eye. And uh, I told Barbara this morning, I said, Barbara, you know what? I said, you know, mommy is up there with all her brothers and sisters, her mother and her father. I said, they got to be having a ball. Mm -hmm. And Barbara said, yeah, you know what? I was thinking the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, and I, I don't know. It just hit me all of a sudden. I just can't, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. The type of time they Right. And you can't, no matter how much you try to, yeah, to do mean, it. No matter how I look at it, I just you can't it's do like it. something I can't imagine. You can't. Because we you know, and then I and then I even said to Barbara I said, you know what, I think you're going to sit right next to him. Mm -hmm. That's my baby sister. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean it's 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 just I mean my mind was just going crazy. Yeah. I mean But all that you said, it's it's uh -huh. that but even way more than that. Because you can't touch it. Right. Who's that? Hammer said, you can't touch this? You can't right. touch it. You can't even begin to imagine how wonderful it is. But we got to be away from this world of bondage. Right? So that's what making God your Lord and your shepherd. Right? Now let's, let's, let's dig that out a little bit because there's some more into that. He said, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. And see, and that's that's significant because he's just not saying he's Lord, which we say, well, I'm going to do what you say. But shepherd, I mean, he's going to guide me. Mm -hmm. And protect me. All right. We, we, all right. Penny getting ahead of us. Oh, She's she getting to protection. We ain't there yet, Jeremy. <laughs> we're going to get there. <laughs> so he's going to lead me and he's going to guide me. All right. But then we're going to keep on. Look what it says. It says, and I shall, it says, I shall not want. Now. We could spend the rest of the, t the time on that, the whole aspect about what people want. What do you want? What are you trying to achieve? You know, there's that old story about that. Uh, you, 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 you ever go to the dog, ever see the dog races? You know, where they go racing around the track, trying to find, yeah. trying to catch that mechanical rabbit. Rabbit, yeah. Well, there was a story about these, these uh, two boys. They ended up getting one of those dogs, their greyhounds, after the greyhound had retired. And the, the family had the dog, and, they, and the father told the two boys, don't let the dog get off the leash because they're fast. You can't catch them if they get off the leash. And they had the dog in the park, and of course they didn't listen to, to their dad, and they let the dog off the leash. And guess what? The dog saw a rabbit. And pew, he's out. And sure enough, he's been spending his entire life. He was born, bred, spent his whole life trying to, trying to catch that rabbit. And here he is. 
in the park, and guess what he did? He caught, he the, rabbit. caught the rabbit. He brutalized the rabbit, killed it and everything. But now, what's he going to do now? He done caught the rabbit. He spent his whole life trying to catch the rabbit. And now he's got it. So now what's he, what's he going to do now? What's he going to do the next minute, the next hour, or the next day? What's the dog going to do the next week? Well, I don't, I don't finally caught the rabbit. What's next? And that's how a lot of things are in life. This world will set you up having you chase things for years and years and years. And some people have the, I don't know if you want to call it fortune or, or, or good fortune or bad fortune, to actually catch what they're chasing and end up still depressed. Well, what do I do now? People get all these awards, they get all this money, they get all this fame, they get all this stuff, and they find that they're chasing all this stuff that's dangling and dangling in front of them, and they get it, and they still drink themselves, drug themselves, kill themselves. Why? Because it doesn't bring the joy that you think it's going to bring. This world is still, you, you're still in jail. You're not free. You don't feel free. You don't feel, you have a moment of feeling like, like elated because you did something, but then what does that do or bring you? Does it make you eternally, uh, 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 doesn't give you eternal life, doesn't give you eternal health? It doesn't change a lot of things. You're still in this world, and you're still going to need your Lord, and you're still going to need a shepherd, regardless of what you gain or what you achieve. So you might as well build that into your character and into your walk. I need a Lord and I need a shepherd. Then I will not want. Because if I don't, I'm going to always want things and get them and then want more. Or want something else. Well, what's the scripture about we're in the world? But not, but of, not of the world. That's right. There you go. That's right. But a lot of people don't believe that. Yeah. And a lot of so people... They don't subscribe to that. Satan has um, pepped up his game so much that people are deceived and thinking that what this is where this is where it's at. But we're looking for a new heaven right. and a new earth, mm -hmm. and that's where our freedom is. That's right. Yes, that's right. So um, we don't want because the things that we want are in God. They're in the Lord. They're in the Shepherd. So since I already have the Lord and I have the shepherd, mm -hmm. I don't want, not here. Mm -hmm. Now, does that somebody, you know, the, the, the cynical guy would be like, well, Wayne, you don't want to have uh, 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 some good, good food or a nice house or, or good health. That's not what I'm talking about. I look to the Lord to help me have the wisdom day to day to navigate. But that's not what I live for. Mm -hmm. I don't live for those things. I'm not living so that I can get the nice house or the nice car. I'm not living for the for the, the you know the great job or or find that great mate or to have some kind of you know wonderful whatever. My my goal is to navigate. And we live in to live again. And live to live again, as Penny that's, said. Ooh. That's right. All right. Mm -mm. Now that's just verse one of Psalms 23. But let's keep going. Verse 2, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now, it didn't say he persuades me. It didn't say he uh, suggests. He's letting you know, if I'm going to be, let's go back up to verse 1, if I'm going to be your Lord, and if I'm going to be your shepherd, then I'm going to tell you where to lie down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you where to go. So I'm going to say, you need to go here. They, the, the, um, the Lord, the God took the children of Israel out of Egypt and told them where to go. You are going to where? The land of milk and honey. And honey. That's where you're going. I'm not going to take you out of sin. I'm not taking you out of Egypt just to do and go where you want. I'm going to bring you to green pastures. And I'm going to make you go there. If you follow me. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't follow me, you can wind up wherever you want. Ten bucks but if you're going to follow me, <laughs> you're going to lie down in green pastures. Okay? But look what it says. 
He leadeth me besides the still waters. Okay. So I'm going through the water. The, when the, when, the, when the, the Hebrew, the, the uh, Israelite nation went through the Red Sea, they went through on what? Dry ground and had still water on the left and still water on their right. And when the Egyptians tried to go through, their water was not still. It was rough. Now, what does that say? That speaks about our traveling through. See, you're going from green pasture to green pasture. In other words, what the Lord is saying, I will what? Provide. Because the green pasture means you're going to do what? You're going to be able to eat. That's what sheep eat. Sheep need what? Green pastures. You got to eat. Sheep need to be able to drink water. That means it's going to provide for what you thirst for. All right? And sheep don't drink from running rivers. They need it's very still. quiet, still water. So the Lord is letting you know, this. what you see here in verse 2 is the Passover. All right? I am the bread of life. Uh, I am uh, 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 that, that water that quenches the thirst. If you ask to drink of my water, you will never what? Thirst again. Thirst again. That's the beauty of it. And so what he's telling you is that I can give you the food that you really want. You're going to get the true manna that comes down from heaven. Because it's not the collard greens and the, and the, and the turkey and, and the spam, as we were talking about earlier. It's the, it's, do you, have you eaten of the Lord? The Lord is our ultimate green pasture. If you're eating him, Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. If you, don't, you have no part. if you don't do it, you don't have no part of me. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says, I'm making you eat this grass, the green pasture, drink this water, the still water, take my flesh, drink my blood. That means you becoming part of him. I'm part of what he is. Go ahead. I don't know. Oh, I thought saying. you were going to say something. <laughs> and so therefore, it, it, it begins to work and to change myself. That's what Paul talked about when he talked about being uh, in this world but not of it. Don't be uh, don't be conformed to this world, but but be transformed. How? Renewing of your mind, and that's what we get by continuously eating in the green pastures and drinking in the still water. And he makes a way out of no way, so. That uh, tells us even though we are traveling through this, this land, he can make the green pastures for us. Mm -hmm. He can make the still waters for us as, as long as we follow him. Mm -hmm. Because all, these, all, all those blessings is in his hand, for one thing. And uh, he can lead us to it. Exactly. He can lead us to it. Now, before we leave verse 2, we got to point out a couple things. He didn't say he, he maketh me lie down in pastures. And he didn't say he leadeth me to water. Mm -hmm. It was green. That means it, it's, it can be eaten. It, can, it has the nourishment that you want. And it's still. That means it's moving at a pace where you can actually drink it. And that's important because, see, a lot of times uh, uh, people want to just say, well, I, I, I can eat what I want. No, you need to eat what he provides. Mm -hmm. It's what God provides. And it's satisfying. And because the, that means if you if if there are if he's leading you to the green pastures, that means there are pastures that are not green. Mm -hmm. If he's leading you to the still water, that means there are waters that are not still. Mm -hmm. So there are waters that you can go, oh, here's some water. I'm gonna go drink of it. That's the water that if you begin to drink of it, you might drown yourself. If you go to certain pastures and eat, they ain't the pastures that the Lord brought you to. You might eat and have upset stomach, bad nutrition, or get poisoned. You got to make sure you're eating from the green and the still. It's an important aspect. Let's keep going. Look at verse 3. He restoreth my soul. Mm. Now, That's a biggie. why is that even in here? Mm -hmm. He restoreth my soul. Because you live in the land of sin. Mm -hmm. You're in a prison. You're in a place where it's dog eat dog. Uh, you're dealing with difficulties. You're dealing with frustrations. You're dealing with what this world shows us every day. What does it show us? 
sickness, tiredness, feebleness of the mind, weariness, death, uh, 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 financial issues, uh, mental issues, relationship problems, health problems, uh, 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 you know, emotional, uh, all of that stuff we bring when we begin to follow. And the, and the Lord says, I'm going to restore your soul. Your soul has been beaten up. Here's the key. When you gain the whole world, Jesus said, what can you, what, what would you give in exchange for your what? Soul. Your soul. So he said, I'm going to renew your soul. Sometimes people can get this. Well, I don't want the soul renewed. I really want the bank account renewed. And they, they attach the two. My mm. soul will get renewed if the bank account gets renewed. Mm. Not necessarily. You can speak to a lot of millionaires that try to kill themselves and, 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 and are not happy and drink themselves to all kinds of stuff because it ain't that. It ain't the education. It ain't the relationship. It's not the health. It's not the mental stability uh, and, and de being able to deal with all this up, all, all the stuff that the world has out there today. The key is, has your soul been touched by God? Now, you can have your soul touched by God and still be broke. You can have your soul touched by God and say again. Well, I, have a, I have a question on that. Yes. Okay. Um, this this chapter right here is my chapter, and it brought me through a brought me through a lot as growing up as a grown woman. Okay. Now, I wasn't baptized in no in no bull pits at no church. I went to. So right, these ocean, the ocean out here. Okay, now my right now my heart is broken right now because let me let me let me explain. I want to take this too far because right my cup is was really flowing. I got these kids. They was abandoned from their from their mom. Okay, and um. I, Fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting for these kids. We finally got these kids. Um, social service was going to go so far. We ended up finding a lawyer in there. She shut the kids down. Now, these kids went to the school. And the way my heart wants me to do is give them to the system. Because I never, ever, 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 I have five grown kids. I never, never, ever had a CPS case on me, and it's killing me. So how can y'all help me to change my heart to not to... One of my kids told me, let them go back, because I dealt with her. I dealt with my husband's daughter when I had her when he went into the military, and his mom accused my family for a uh, raping her, raping his daughter, and he, I, I, I mean, I'm against COVID. I had a, I had a good doctor that was against it and stuff like that, trying to help him because Leah has asthma. But my heart and the, I swear, my soul, I was, my soul, just want me to just say, let them go. So mm -hmm. how can y'all help me? Please help me. Well, Please. well, Mary, we're gonna um, we're gonna tell you the truth, and uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna take a package from uh, my good friend Mr. Smith over here and from my wife. Uh, the truth is, um, I don't have an answer. All right, all right. So there's no one answer, but what I do know is that you're going to have to lean on God, not only every day but every moment. And what we're gonna see here in a minute. Um, is that overwhelming feeling that you feel right now? That's something that everybody that does something purposeful has. Mm -hmm. You can't do something that really, really means something, that really is a big change, that really is going to make a difference and not feel like you want to quit. That's right. You're going to want to quit if you're doing something that makes a difference. So what you want to keep in mind is, you are feeling the ingredients 
that God allows us to deal with when it comes down to producing a recipe or a meal that will ultimately be gourmet. But but you, you got to let it cook. Yeah. You can't eat the pancakes when, you, when it's only flipped once. Yeah. You, you got to let it oh, cook on both batter. sides. You can't suck on the batter. While it's still batter. You got it. So, so what you're you going through, Mary, and, and let me you tell you, you, cook, be all right. you are in the heat, you are in the, on the stove, and you are feeling the burn, and you may just now be getting it on one side. It may get flipped, and you might get the other side as well. What, um, what's that um, story, um, Jacob, or something? He was um, building the wall, and the people was telling him to come down, and he said he was doing a good thing. And he oh, wouldn't yeah. come down. Yeah, that was uh, Ezra uh, yeah, ne ne and Nehemiah. Yeah. So because everything, the system, whatever you're going through is coming at you yeah. because you're doing a you're good doing thing. You're doing a good thing. And they want you to come down. Right. And now, are you going to come down? What they did was, um, it, it, it's, it's dumb because, you know, they don't want they don't to hear that. They don't hear from their mom and nothing like that. It's not the system. It's dumb. They, what right. they... They go for attention. Right. Okay, if I was, I, I remember one time I told my mother she beat me so bad. I told her she licked me because everybody else had to get a lick in the house. Right. I told her, you lick me again, I'm calling the people. She said, go ahead and call them and I'm going to still lick you again for calling. Right. Okay. Well, but it's, it's the, it's. It's coming from the children. I'm doing restructuring in my house. Right. So Gabe was home. So Leah went to the school. Little man Leah with the cool little hat went to the school and said, oh, I'm sick. I got all this and that. So now it's up, like, if, if, if your kids say they got a headache, got all this and that, you got to go and take a test. Right. So you have to take the test. Nothing was wrong with him. Nothing was wrong with him. Right. Then I said, well, okay, let's take Leah before they do it. Right. She goes in there and she... Uh, it, they, they do things for attention, but right. this attention right here, I don't, I don't spoke to, I'm from a strict family. Right. Something like that, I can't even have my grandkids, my grandkids, I can't even have them come and see me. Right. My, my grandkids. Well, um, Mary. I'm afraid to bully, but I told them people when they came here. I told her, I'm a, I told her mother, I'm gonna let this slide. But if they open it, they open the door again. They going. I right. told Gabe, those your grandkids. I will leave this marriage for these kids to want to break up this happy home. And, mm -hmm. and, and I can go through the whole Bible, whatever, like that. But if I want my when I, I want my freedom, I will get this chapter that gave me my freedom right. through my lifetime, and that's what I do. Well, keep yeah. reading the chapter, Mary. And let God lead you, right? Now, and I, work it out for you. And I will say, I will say this: uh, um, the Lord, when He talks about Him being uh, a way, and Him being the Lord, and Him being the Shepherd, what what I found in my experience is that the Lord will show you ways of escape that you don't see right now. Now, sometimes the ways of escape is hard luck. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do got to tell people, okay, for right now, you can't lay your head here. You're going to have to lay your head somewhere else. Now, I'm not telling you that's the answer. I'm just telling you that when the Lord brings you to certain forks in the road, if one of them is, okay, for right now, you're going to have to do something different, you got to allow that to happen too. Um, the Lord doesn't always work in the way that we can understand it. That's why the first thing I told you was I don't have an answer. But what I do know is that nothing worthwhile is easy. And so uh, the struggle that you're going through and the success doesn't always have to be the, out, the outcome that we initially planned. Sometimes the success is something totally different than what we thought it was going to be. So, so you're going to have to just hang in there. And my thing is for, you know, our group here, we're going to continue to pray for you. That the Lord give you strength. And we're going to... Uh, and give you an answer. Uh, uh, and, and the Lord just speaks to your heart and give you what we're getting ready to see here in a minute. All right. Um, so let's, let's, let's see if we, can, if we can get to this here.
But that's that restoring of the soul. You need right now, you need, mm -hmm. you've been, you need to pray this third verse right here. You need the Lord to restore your soul. You just ask God to restore my soul and lead me in a path of righteousness. So you want him to, to just say, all right, I want to do what's right. Now, th that whole righteousness has so many different meanings and, 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 and uh, attributes to it. One of them is, of course, I want to learn to do what's right. That's why I'm trying to call him Lord, because I want to do what he says. But that righteousness also speaks to the fact that what Jesus does goes back and changes everything we've done in the past. Because when Jesus did what he did in chapter, in, in verse 22, Psalms 22, in, chapter, in Psalms chapter 22, when he did that, it erased my sinful past. To the point where God said, I'll throw it into the sea of what? Forgetfulness. So what he did then changed my past, but he did it before I was even born. And so the Lord can make a difference. He changes your outcome. He gives you complete righteousness. So we're trying to do the right thing, but keep in mind God has already given you the righteousness. Mm -hmm. So your, do, your, your attempt to do right has already been accounted as complete in God because of Jesus. Why? Because you're carrying the righteousness that Jesus gave you. So you go, you make your decisions, and if it's hard decisions, you pray, ask God, the Lord, you know. And that's like what that guy said when he came to, 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 to uh, Jesus about his son. And then he tried to get the devil cast out the, out, out the, out the son, and he said, you know, um, Jesus asked him, well, do you believe? And he said, I believe, but help my unbelief. So he was all over the place. He said, I believe you. That's why I'm here. But then I don't even know how it's going to be. So I have a lot of doubt. And so you got to walk in that complexity of struggle, of being in the heat, of being uncomfortable, and then thinking to yourself, what could I be doing if I didn't have to deal with all this? Well, in your mind, the thing that the Lord wants you to do is to just lean on him. That's what you could be doing. No matter what you were doing in life, you're still going to do what? Lean on God. If I got no responsibilities in my household, what do I still need to do? Lean on God. If I got my house full with children and grandchildren, what do I need to do? Lean on God. So the answer is the same as far as where to go and then what to do is individual you're going to need god to give you some individual uh, uh, uh situational things daily uh and that's something that uh, we certainly don't want to take lightly that's a major responsibility and the lord will see you through he will not let you down he will not leave you and he will not forsake you that's what god said not i i'm not saying it jesus said that all right so he says, he's going to lead me in, uh, he leads me in the path of righteousness. But look what it says, for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. See, I'm taking on his righteousness. So therefore, if I got any imperfection, it, you, well, it, then you must got to look at Jesus. Well, there's no imperfection in Jesus. Well, then I don't have any. Wait a minute. What you talking about, man? I've known you since you was a child. You was a rascal. You got all kinds of stuff. I'm not talking about the natural me. I'm talking about the me that the father sees. That's what I'm talking about. And what he sees is the covering, the blood of Jesus that covers me. Because I have taken up his flesh and I have drank up his blood. I have become what he is. And I've taken on his righteousness. Therefore, I can have this restoring of the soul and have righteousness. So I'm healed and perfected. That's what verse 3 is basically saying. Healed and made perfect. <laughs> Who don't want that? We all want that. But let's go to verse, let's go to verse 4. Yea. Now, this is here. Now, this is how you know this is still dealing with earth. Look what it says. Yea, though I uh, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. All right. First of all, let me just identify this. Everybody that's ever been born and is alive is in the valley of the shadow of death. 
Because that's what this place is. People like to always say, well, I thank God I'm in the land of the living. And I get it. I know what they're talking about. But this isn't the land of the living. This is the land where people die. We're in the shadow of death right now. Everybody, you, me, your neighbor, your friend, your cousin, your children, your aunts, everybody, your boss, your manager, everybody is in the shadow of death because that's what this land is. This land is where death happens. So therefore, you say, well, if I'm in the land of the shadow of death, my goodness, well, let's keep reading. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, that's a difference. Because, see, if you're in the land of death, and the scripture describes death as the what? An enemy, the last enemy. So if you're in a land that all you see is your enemy, and we see our enemy all the time. We hear of loved ones and different ones that, that die and pass, and that's, a, that's a, a, a fight with the enemy. But there's a difference. There's a twist. I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Look at that. You see? So right here, Mary, he's telling you again. He's there with you. Hard, hard, uh, uh, heavy heart, uh, uh, not sure what to do, confused, uh, want to get break free. And my ancestors is with me too. And, and what, that's one of the things you're going to keep. He's with me. I'm in the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. I'm not going to be worried about what is, is going to happen. I'm going to continue to ask for the restoring of my soul. And I'm going to walk in his righteousness, believing and trusting that he's with me. And I, sometimes I'm making hard decisions. And that's, that's and sometimes it's, it's, you say, well, wait, that's a whole lot easier said than done. And that I agree to. Yes, 100%. But that's why we have to learn and practice to lean on him. You got to get used to leaning on him in the difficult times. And as things get more and more difficult, you, I'm just going to lean on him. I'm just going to lean. And so leaning on his everlasting arms is what we need to make sure that we're learning to do. So he says, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. And look what it says. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay, now the rod and the staff. He has this. He has a, this, this this staff that has two things. He has a, the, the 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 staff that has a little crook on the end, and that's to help guide you. You take that thing and you slick slick slide it around the neck of the sheet, and you can move it and pull it. You put it around its 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 abdomen, and you can move it into different places. You can help guide it. But then you also can take that same staff and beat off a wolf, and knock you know. So he's going to guide and protect. So when you are being overwhelmed, keep in mind, you're not in the fight alone. He's there. And he says he's there. And you don't have to worry because he's fighting with you. The Lord never loses a battle. The only time a person doesn't get victorious is when they walk away. If you walk away from Jesus, remember when Jesus was telling them, eat my flesh and drink my blood? What happened? The people did what? They, they left. Walked away. They walked away. But that's a hard saying. Who can do that? Who can do that? Exactly. And then the Lord turned to his apostles, to his disciples and said, will you leave too? And they said, well, where else can we go? It was still difficult. That's right. You're the only ones that got the words of eternal life. So where else can we go? I don't like or understand what you're saying. It doesn't sound smooth or easy. But where else can we go? And that is right here. And that's, go ahead. That's the part of leaning on Jesus that's difficult for us. Because we have to take on the idea and, the, and realize that we have to allow him to die fully, mm -hmm. give him the wheel. But no, we want to put ourselves in and put our thoughts in. And no, we have to give it all over. That's leaning on Jesus. Right. And, and we have to give up our will. Yes. We got to give it up. And then and a lot of times we don't want to do that. That's, that's right. right. You know, 
That's that's what it boils down to. You mm-hmm. have to say, listen, I'm done. Mm-hmm. It's yours. Yep. You know, I, like you were saying a few weeks ago, in New Driver. Yep. Yep. You know, let him die. That's right. Because it seems like I'm just sitting the wall. <laughs> yep. Every, that's true. every time I make a turn, I'm mm-hmm. crashing. That's it. You in the bumper so, car. So many yeah, times. You know, like I said, that's how, that's how it was with me. Mm-hmm. You know, see, this all brings me back to my program. You know, every time I did what I wanted to do, I went right back out and got out. I started doing the things my sponsor said, Wayne, he said, listen, I didn't be mean, I'm not trying to be nasty, but they say, you get this program the way you got it. So he says, whole thing is 90 days, 90 means the 90 days. I said, he said, listen, I'm telling you to do it, that means I'm going to sit right next to you and do it too. Mm-hmm. He said, I can't tell you to do it, and I don't do it. Right. That's when I started to see, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't do everything he said, but when I didn't do it, hey, yo, man, you know, let me tell you what I did. He said, you know, I tell me I already know, but I did it too. Yeah. You know, because now you want to take your world back. Mm. You know, and like I said, that's a real hard thing. No, let me rephrase it. That was a real hard thing for me to do. For me to really sit back. You know, because I was like, I'm only thinking what my parents tell me. You can't tell me. Mm -hmm. You know? But once I started doing what he wanted me to do, not liking it, but did it anyhow, everything got a little bit easier. Got a little bit easier. Got a little bit good. Don't you take that will back. You know, that's why I was the one that said, Lord, God, the will be done. Because if, if I say mine, yeah. I'm going to just stay in the bed because I'm going to be miserable. Yeah. And that's, um, what, that's what that rod or that staff is for. See, it, cause, see, we need to be, sometimes the Lord can say through his word, do this. But other times, he's going to have to take that, that little hook, hook it around your neck, and pull you to where you need to be. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, not. He's gonna hit you upside down, would he? Yeah, you know, that's like he ain't gonna hit you. Well, he ain't gonna, gonna beat your brains out. No, he's but gonna hit you. Ain't that, that rod that says for like children too, when they disobey, <laughs> disobey the parents? Come on now, let's talk. Let's, let's talk about our priests. Yeah. Well, uh, Mary, you are absolutely right. The Bible says, uh, uh, "Spare not the if you spare not the rod, you don't spoil the child. If you know, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child." But, uh, but, but, but now let me, but let me just tell you, uh, we're living in a really, really weird time now, and so you have to you you have, some you, you have to have some wisdom mm-hmm. because there's certain aspects about it that uh, you got to say, "Okay, well, Lord, show me how to deal." While I'm in the enemy's camp, mm-hmm. because that's what we are. We're in the enemy's camp, and so you got to kind of think like a Daniel, yeah. like the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, I'm in Babylon. Mm-hmm. How do I operate, and how do I do? Because I can't. I got to understand and know uh, that there are some some things. Now, with that being said, there are some times that you may have to go against it, like they did. And get thrown in the fiery furnace. <laughs> if, sometimes you might have to just, I'm going to take my stand and I'm going to get thrown in the lion's den. I'll see. That's what, I'll see now you're preaching now. So. <laughs> well, there's two, always two sides so, to the story. So you, 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 right. you, you yeah, can be led by God. I'm going to step but back you, and let the Lord, but then you got to move. Well, then I'm going to know that then he got no problem. The lion's the problem. That's right. But this, listen. My ancestors like that. that point. Now, listen. Okay. Like I said, my chapter. My listen. This is my chapter. This is my chapter. I should go and put a tattoo on it. My ass. Don't do. Don't do that. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we can finish. Let's try to finish up your chapter here. The, uh, it all said, God, Jesus said, "Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's too." So right. We 
Right. You can't be one side. You, you have to have wisdom. All right. Now, see, now, Penny just pointed out something. That, yeah, uh, you got to. I, I, I want to make sure that, that you get that point she made. Because, see, that's one of the things that they tried to trap Jesus in. Mm -hmm. Well, in Rome, it's Rome's laws. And Rome says you need to go through all this work and hand all your money through taxes to Rome. And they knew that was not right. Yeah. And so they said, well, I'm going to ask Jesus. I'm going to get him in a point where he's going to have to make the decision. It's like what Jesus would say. It's almost like asking him today. My child was really, really bad. Shall I whip him or shall I not? You know, because Caesar said, don't whip him. And, and, but yet, so they went to Jesus. Shall I pay the taxes or not? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, give me a coin. Whose Give me. Is on he said. He said. Whose pictures on here? Mm -hmm. And they said Caesar. He said, "Okay, take Caesar's Caesar. stuff and give it back to Caesar, but make sure you give to God what belongs to God." And so that's why I said you got to go to Him and let the, the Lord, Lord lead work. you. Yeah. You got to get led because sometimes you need to buck the system. Mm -hmm. Other times you need to work. Within the system, but still being led by God. And, and, and so and we'll, we, we have to see how the Lord leads and guides. And that's mm -hmm. why um, a lot of times there's no one. An here's the answer. The, no. the answer to everything is go to God. Mm -hmm. Let the, the answer is uh, uh, be led and be guided. The answer is let this rod and his staff guide you. That's right. Go to the green and the still you know, areas of God, that green pasture and the still waters. That's where you're going to find your answer. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at verse 5 here. Look what it says here. Now, see, this is important to keep in mind because while you're dealing with death and, and, and struggle and all that kind of stuff, look what verse 5 says. Thou preparest a table before me. Look at that. I got something to eat. You prepare a place to sit down and be civilized. We all need that. We all need that kind of all right, civil mind. That's why I'm by the still water. I, can, I don't have to worry about drowning. I'm sitting at the table. I can just sit here and just be and have conversation and, and be prepared to eat. But watch this. Look what it's connected to. Thou preparest a table before me where? In the Presence. In the presence of my enemy. The enemy wasn't removed. Mm -hmm. The enemy wasn't taken out. The enemy is right there. Mm -hmm. And he can have you have civil conversation, table eating, manners, and all that with the enemy right there. The enemy can't get to you. See, the enemy is looking at you eating and be like, oh, I wish I could take that food out. And he can't get to it. But he's there. The enemy wants to get it. See, the devil is here. He wants to take what peace and what joy. When you're eating spiritual food, the enemy is right there trying to snatch that spiritual food out of your mouth. But you sit there and you enjoy it. You at the Lord's table. Where? Right where you are. We're here on earth. We're in a world of sin and, and, and hate and, 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 and dishonor and, and sinfulness. But the Lord has prepared a table. We're at a table right now. Enjoying the things of God. In the presence of the enemy. The mm -hmm. devil don't like this. Mm -hmm. He don't like us praying one for another. Mm -hmm. He don't like us encouraging one mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. He's right here and can't help it that we mm -hmm. are passing. Mary said, pass me some of those mashed potatoes and some of those greens. And we're passing them over to her. We're helping her eat a little bit Amen. more. Right? Amen. And, and the enemy don't like it. Mm -hmm. So we, the, this is the table that the Lord prepares right in the Face of, the enemy. of the enemy. And we just gonna say continue to eat, continue to, to absorb Open. the goodness. Mm -hmm. Stay on those green pastures. Keep mm -hmm. drinking that still water and watch God work it out. He wants you to jump shipwreck. Yeah, and stay in the ship. Stay in there. That's stay right. in the ship. But now, wait a minute. We're not even done. While you're at the table, in the presence of your enemy, look what happened. Thou anointed my head with oil. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And so you're not just there, but now I'm going to anoint. That oil represents the richness and the goodness, but it also represents what? The Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, while you're there, I'm going to pour into you some of me. Mm -hmm. 
God's going to pour on you. And, and I think it's like, you know what the scripture says? Be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed? How? By the renewing of your mind? And it makes no mistake that the oil is poured where? On your head. All right? He anointed my head with oil. In other words, I'm helping you to think like really? God. Mm -hmm. I'm helping you to renew your mind, to transform it. So that the frustrations that you see, because see, what you don't see from Jesus is Jesus being overwhelmed. <laughs> he was never like, ah, you know, he, so he wants us to learn in every circumstance not to be overwhelmed, but to see where God is leading. What, I'm look, what am I looking for in this chaos? All kinds of stuff is happening. What's going on? I'm looking for the light. I'm looking for the guide. I'm looking for my shepherd. Because once I see him, that's the way I'm going to walk. The minute I see him, I'm going. Or everything's going on, and all of a sudden, there's the Lord. Let me walk that way. Right? So, that, what was that? Run DMC, walk this way? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but then he ain't done yet. So I've got the table in front of my enemy. I'm anointed with the oil. My cup runneth over. That's how the Lord says, I will bless you. Press down, shaking together, and what? Running over. And that's an important aspect to our relationship and our walk with God. He will give you things that will force you to be able to give to somebody else because you can't keep it yourself. You're going to have too much to use for just you. Your cup's going to run over. That makes you a blessing. When you grow more food than you can eat, you might as well give it away. Now, we live in a land that when they grow more food than they can, they can sell or, 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 or eat, they throw it in the garbage. They don't think about, well, let me go help the people that don't have anything because they don't want to give anybody nothing for free. They don't want to help anybody. That's just totally against what God tells us to do. But the Lord says, if I let your cup run over, what are you going to do with it? Man, I'm going to find somebody. I'm, I, I'm going to just let it hit other people. When my cup's running over, somebody's going to get splashed with it somehow or another. I'm going to make sure that somebody receives that goodness that God has blessed me with. All right. I'm going, to, I'm going to finish up only because we're past our time, but we only got one more verse. All right. So I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and, and take my time. We'll finish this last verse. So we may be a little five or 10 minutes past. But look what verse six says. Look what it, it says. Surely. Now, not maybe, not I hope, not occasionally. It says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Wait a minute. Why is goodness and mercy following you? It's following you because of who you are following. <laughs> See, goodness and mercy wouldn't follow you if you weren't following the Lord and your shepherd. But because you are following your Lord and your shepherd, you're going to have goodness and mercy. It will be there. Now, I need goodness because I need to do learn to do what's proper, what's right. And I need mercy because I'm not always going to do what's proper and what's right. I need them both. I need to know how to do what's right. And I need to, I need to know how to get over myself when I don't do what's right. So I need goodness and I need mercy. Shall follow me all the days of my life. That's while I'm here on earth. And look what it says. And here's the ultimate thing. This is why we do all of this. Why do you do this whole 23rd Psalm? What are you doing it all for? Why are you going through what you're going through, Mary? This is why. You're doing it for this reason. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's where you're going to be. That's where you're going to have your, your consolation. That's where you're going to look back and go, you know what, this stuff I went through? The scripture tells us that we're going to look back at our life and realize yeah, you might call it tough while I was on earth, but when I look at it from heaven, it's nothing. It was nothing. It's not even worth, worthy to be compared to what I gained by struggling here on earth. So here is the, here's the, 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 the culmination, and, and we're going to end with this. Whatever it is that you're going through, 
it's not going to be worth anything as far as, well, the reason I got what I got in heaven because I went through all of this stuff on earth. You're going to look at this, man, what I went through on earth was nothing compared to what heaven is. You're going to actually have the true taste of freedom. You think you feel burdened and overwhelmed and heavy laden now? If you got rid of that, and I'll just say this, uh, Mary, even if you got, if, if the kids were gone, you still gonna have the burdens of earth. So you're going to have burdens regardless. So do what the Lord has given you the strength today. And keep in mind, don't try to have enough strength for tomorrow. Have strength for today. Well, I'm not going to be able to take this next week. Don't worry about next week. I'm not going to be able to take this next month or next year. Don't worry about next month or next year. Lord, give me the strength to deal with this situation and these kids today. Go to sleep, wake up, and ask for another strength today. And before you know it, you don't struggle. That's right. Exactly. Not for today, just for right this moment. I need some strength for right now. And then move on. All right? And not to say that that's an answer or I'm telling you what to do, but you're going to need to lean on God. And God promised that he would give you uh, uh, your daily bread. Mm -hmm. Our Father which art in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name, that, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our what? Daily uh, bread. So you just need enough for today. Go to sleep tomorrow. All you need is enough for the, for the next day. Don't try to gather up enough manna to take care of the situation for a whole week or a whole month. All it's going to do is rot and cause other problems. So if you don't have the answer, that's okay. I don't know what to do. That's okay. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do right this second? What are you going to do this evening? What are you going to, And then when you wake up tomorrow morning, what am I going to do tomorrow morning? And you just take it like that. You just, and you might not have a full week plan or a plan for the whole month or a plan for the whole year, but you got a plan for now. And that's trusting and leading on the Lord. All right, we're going to stop there. Any other comments or questions?